Today we're going to talk about design concepts for our website and this will will give us sort of a grounding to start approaching phase two where we're working um, on taking our wireframes and building you know consistent color scheme and fonts and all and putting those together um, so if you go to the class discussion section of blackboard and scroll down I don't know why mine okay there's a PDF file down here at the bottom and that's what we're going to start out by looking at this just gives a summary of some of our design concepts and considerations things that you've probably been reading about in the red book or seeing through the web style guide as you start to put your wireframe together and you're working on phase one and so we're just gonna discuss some of these elements of good design we should think about the content of the page we should think about making sure that the things that somebody expects to see on a web page are there and that we're not filling up the page with a bunch of content that's really unnecessary just to you know increase the size of the page for instance we want relative useful content on our pages the pages should be easy to navigate and use I shouldn't come to a website and be surprised by the layout and wonder how do I navigate around this how do I get to this or that it should be very intuitive if we have too much text on the page we should think about using multiple pages instead of somebody having or uh, sorry vertical I was gonna say horizontal uh, vert excessive vertical sw scrolling that's something we want to eliminate either through making multiple pages or through um, through using some sort of content management and I know that we looked at a few pictures of that when we were talking about phase one having um, you know things like it, it's called an accordion where you click on the question and the panel opens to reveal it uh, the particular question you're interested in instead of seeing all that content at once for instance A website is really a collection of individual web pages. So with that in mind, all of the pages within our site should be very consistent. They should have a uniform look and feel. We should have consistent navigation so somebody is not going from page to page and, and having to relocate uh, the area where they can navigate through the pages, having consistent colors and fonts, or using templates, which is something we'll look at when we do get to actually using the web authoring software. A template allows you to keep certain things consistent, like my header and footer, for instance, um, while still being able to put unique content but making sure that those elements that are going to stay consistent throughout the page are actually identical as opposed to having to cut and paste and then making a change later and having to make sure you did that throughout the site so templates can help facilitate that consistency we want to make sure that there is adequate white space on the page even the page that we're looking at right now it would be sort of intimidating if I had opened this up and it was just left to right nothing but text no extra space you know there's a reason that we often put a space in between each paragraph just to make it easier to read so we should think about having that additional space and it does isn't necessarily white your background color might be a light gray or you know baby blue or something it just means open space that gives the eyes sort of a place to rest and makes it easier to um, consume the content we can get feedback from the audience either through a form or a survey or poll so that might be something that we're interested in as well as just letting people look at our design before it's live on the internet uh, to see if they're actually expecting the things that we are expecting um, for instance when we do animations I often see students make animations where the text goes by too quickly for somebody to read this is probably because the student knows what the text is says and they looked at it over and over again maybe for a half hour or 45 minutes while they were designing the animation 
And if you know what something says, it's easier for you to read that quickly as opposed to somebody who's never seen the content before. So by letting somebody else look at our website, we can get ideas about things that we might have thought were okay because we were the ones that designed it. We should think about browser compatibility and we should look at our website in multiple browsers and if something is, um, if there's a huge deviation between what we expected to display and how a particular browser is interpreting those tags, we might want to think about using alternative elements instead to accomplish the, the same thing in order to get a little bit more consistency over different browsers should think about the page being balanced. Symmetrical is essentially a balance along a invisible line down the, the center. Uh, so we think about like center alignment, for instance, would be a symmetrical balance. The page that we're looking at right now, and I know this isn't a website, but this document is actually a asymmetrical balance. It's balanced around this left axis. So we should think about that instead of having things just sort of jumped around and sporadic on the page that we think about having some sort of grounding point to our design. We should consider how long it is taking uh, for users to download our page um, and particularly if we have a large amount of high resolution images or a lot of audio and video. Um, streaming is a wondering about this is a technique for video where it starts playing as soon as it's downloaded enough of the content under the assumption that by the time the, the user finishes watching that amount of video the rest of it will be downloaded. Uh, the alternative to that is downloading the entire video before we start watching it. There are ways to compensate for some of this. You might be wondering, well, but I want to have these images. I want to have this audio and video. You know, so streaming is a way, for instance, to compensate for the high download time of video. For images, for example, we, um, if we wanted a large amount of high resolution images, we might think about using thumbnails of like a gallery, smaller versions of the image, where a user could click on that smaller version and see the larger high resolution version. And then if they weren't interested in that picture, they wouldn't have to download the high resolution image. I'm not going to talk too much about compensating for audio download because later in the course we will look at file formats for audio which uh, address that issue. I'm also not going to talk too much about monitors right now because when we introduce phase two in about a week, we will talk about monitor size. But what we want to just be aware of is that we should be designing for a particular size of the display, particular resolution, uh, so that our, our page design lines up with what users are you know, more likely to, to have at home. We should think about users with disabilities and whether or not they can access the page. The W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium, has a project called WAI, the Web Accessibility Initiative. And when we talk about accessibility, we'll be looking at the WAI portion of their site for most of the period. Um, just to refresh, the W3C was the organization that back when we were looking at HTML that time and we validated our page, we checked to make sure it was consistent with current standards for HTML, we were doing that through the W3C. So there are some things that we can do. For instance, this one provides a text description of an image that is not visible on the page, but it's there so that somebody using a screen reader would at least have a description of what it is that they, they aren't actually uh, visually uh, taking in. This area here applies to 
physical and logical styles. If you remember in the beginning, and, and we'll discuss this again, but using strong instead of bold, or emphasis instead of italicis, or saying that you want the font bigger instead of a particular font size, allows it, it allows for you know changes in magnification to be implemented uh, more easily. We all sh should also just be aware of content that somebody might not see if they uh, were looking at our page and had a disability or what they might not be exposed to and alternative ways that we could provide that information as well. You know, one idea on your own web page is to, uh, with your browser settings, turn off the graphics and see if you could still use the page. This was discussed in the web style guide how users view a web page. I know we're looking at a different page now. I actually stopped the video to open the web style guide so that we could see what we meant by the F and Z pattern. Users tend to scan through a page, at least initially, uh, to see where things are located and where they might want to go. This is one common method of scanning that helps with um, helps us design pages that are going to be long, where we start to put more important information towards the top of the page. Because as the user continues to scroll down, they're less likely to read through all of the content. They're more likely to focus in this golden triangle area. Users also often scan in a Z pattern, where they look across the banner, and kind of scan through the page, uh, and then look at the footer. I had already kind of summarized what the W3C was up here, where we had previously mentioned that. If we look at our textbook's website, if you go to my page and click on Teaching and then 170, I'll go ahead and go back there just in case people were not sure how to get to the page. Um, I'm looking right here, Basics of Web Design Textbook Companion Site. Our publisher has some resources online uh, from the, the kind of add-on to the textbook. And this is Chapter 3, which is essentially the area where we're talking about design. And there are a number of things available here. Some of them I have opened up for instance, on this web design from scratch page, we see some of the layout. This would be a symmetric versus an asymmetric uh, design. This here, the Web 2.0 Design Style Guide, also, and these are anchor links, you could go to these areas, gives you a little bit more information than what I'm going into as far as designs. You could certainly look through that. Both of these are, oops, sorry, I just forgot where I, sorry about that, I forgot where I was going. On this page, on chapter three, uh, the links that I were looking at, and there's a lot of valuable links on this page, but I was looking here under this design inspiration section. Also, if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, this design checklist, you'll see a page that is from our publisher that gives you sort of a checklist when you're going through your page to see if it is well designed. Just sort of, okay, you know, does it appeal to the audience? Who would the target audience be and whether or not it's appealing to them? And you could just go through the, the page. I used to use a similar checklist actually from a different publisher and provide some websites that we would look at. Um, you know, I used to photocopy it, pass it out, and we would look through some websites, and I would have all of you in the class go through the checklists on those websites in groups. Um, we're going to do something sort of like that, but we're not going to actually use the, the checklist itself. Instead, I'm going to have you all look at, go back to Blackboard, go into Examples, and you'll see these design landscaping pages. 
I chose all of these pages on landscaping because when we're looking at design uh, and trying to compare and contrast design, generally it's a better idea to look at websites that are all on the same topic. For instance, if I want to look at the design of Wells Fargo's webpage and think about those elements, I might want to compare it to websites for Bank of America, for instance, or other you know, Capital One, other banks, because they have the same audience in mind, you know, and the, that audience is expecting similar things, and you'll see the similarities of those pages and be able to compare them better than, you know, taking one of these landscaping pages and comparing it to a shoe store, for instance. Uh, so I find that finding websites in the same category help you to compare uh, design characteristics and that's why in phase one and in phase two I have you look at other websites other I call them competitors um, for your business so that you can see what they're doing and what might be working for them if you look at three different banks and something is consistent across them that's probably something that that works out very well for users as far as the design is concerned so what I'd like you to do is pause the video for a minute and open up these links. Uh, there's just, this one's not working right now, but there are just these six of them. And just scroll through the pages, get an idea for what you think are the design elements of the page, you know, the important characteristics of the page, uh, or what isn't that great in terms of design. And then when you resume the video, I'll talk about just a few things of the pages that I want to point out. 